Cormac McCarthy, in two of his novels, employs transgender characters in an advanced mirroring process that magnifies the soul journey of the protagonist. And in today's video, I will walk you guys through the three-step method McCarthy uses to implement these trans characters so you can see behind the curtain of a legendary author's process and maybe learn a couple things for your own writing. So my name is Ian and I have been studying Cormac McCarthy for over 16 years. And on this channel, we have a library of over 150 videos on Cormac McCarthy. And you will find theories and ideas that will never be touched on in academia. And this is one of them. And before we get going, I want all my culture warriors out there on the left and on the right, look at this chart before you start to rage in the comments. So the two novels we're going to be talking about today that feature transgender characters are The Passenger and Sutri. And McCarthy started writing Sutri in 1958 and The Passenger in 1961. The characters in the novels are living in downtown Knoxville in 51 for Sutri and New Orleans in 1980 for The Passenger. So applying our 2024 political realities and social opinions on these characters and McCarthy's reasons for using them is absolutely silly because McCarthy finished The Passenger in 2013, long before this phase of the culture war heated up. And McCarthy didn't have a cell phone or a laptop. He didn't see the whole Caitlyn Jenner saga and be like, man, I should really add a trans character. Or he wasn't sitting on his tablet watching the Daily, Daily Wire and being like, man, I'm going to dunk on some trans people in my next novel. His first trans character was featured in 1979. And he started that novel in 1958 based on his own experiences and trans people that he knew in downtown Knoxville in 1951. So however you are feeling about all of this is you projecting onto the characters and onto McCarthy because he has no idea what's happening in your little culture war. Because one of the reasons we all like Cormac McCarthy is that he features these fringe characters from the outer rim of American society. We get the rambling judge, necrophiliacs, anarchists, prostitutes, big-hearted cowboys, and so many other wild, mostly secondary characters with McCarthy's works. And the main reason McCarthy does this, the adding of these fringe characters, is that McCarthy most of the time works without any plot. And to compound that, his main characters most of the time have little to no interiority. So by adding violence, nature, odd characters who always seem to like to tell stories, we forget the, com the common, excuse me, the lack of common narrative elements that most of the other authors we call great use. So let us now hop into talking about these transgender characters. And their names are Trippin' Through the Dew and Debussy Fields. And I just have to say up front, everybody, that these are A-tier names for characters. Cormac in 1960 obviously had no idea that the word bussy would be a slang word for a man's anus 60 years later, actually kind of coinciding with its popularity and being used right around a couple years before The Passenger came out. And honestly, it just makes it that much funnier and better. And Trippin' Through the Dew is a sick name no matter who is rocking it. Like, let me, let's just be honest here. I am a high school teacher and I have kids who are changing their names all of the time. But no one has even come close to as sick of a name as Trippin' Through the Dew. Because the name evokes nature and spontaneity and like, I just, you know, see green fields of grass that someone is hopping through. So, so let's hop into step number one of McCarthy employing trans characters in his novels because he uses the same tactics in both novels, which leads me to believe that it is a strategy. So in both novels, The Passenger and Sutri, he employs the idea of the twin. So in Sutri, there's this general haunting from Sutri, and we're going to be obviously spoiling Sutri and The Passenger from here on out, but there's this haunting from Sutri's dead stillborn twin. And there are multiple accounts in Sutri of heautotoscopy, if I'm saying that correctly, which is 
where you see your own body from a distance, almost like you are viewing yourself from the third person and looking at yourself. Like this is a common experience for people on psychedelics. And one could say that Sutri is a pretty psychedelic character. But what this creates in the novel is this kind of anti Sutri character that seems to be following him around. And we could go pretty deep because there's a lot of hidden stuff, but there are some big moments like the dead body in the houseboat. And this kind of these hallucinations and this idea is stemming from trauma and this fragmentation because Sutri obviously had the trauma of birth. He had the trauma of his family and having to leave them. He had the trauma of leaving his wife and then mourning over his child, as we see in the novel. We also see him, you know, going through um, the stint in the mountains, which was very harsh. Uh, the rape scene, typhoid fever. There are like all these different things that are happening to him and probably further enhancing this divide within him. And when we look at the passenger, a very similar thing with a twin is occurring. Alicia is Bobby's sexual and spiritual twin flame. And when we just when you look at the structure of the passenger, it is saying as much. We have one chapter with Alicia and, and italics, and it transitions to Bobby. And within this duality, Bobby is being haunted by her, even as much as or maybe being present on that rig. You know, I think that when Bobby is out on that oil rig and there's someone on there, there are a million different theories, but obviously one of them is the spirit of Alicia or the, or the some form of energy related to her that is interfering with him there. And even more so, he's mirroring her and slipping also into a schizophrenic state or enlightened state, uh, whatever you want to think that's happening, just like, just like Alicia. But his trauma could be from the separation, the car crash, um, the separation with Alicia, excuse me, his car crash in Europe, sins of the father, or even epigenetic radiation stemming from his father being at the Trinity's test site and visiting Hiroshima after uh, we bombed them. So pulling back to the transgender characters, tripping through the dew and uh, Debussy fields serve as metaphorical twins for the atypical Bobby and Suchery. All four characters, Trippin, Debussy, Bobby, and Cornelius, all are light-haired and really don't care about society very much. Obviously, Trippin' Through the Dew and Sutri have more of that, but there is a lightheartedness between and, and tenderness and nonconformity with uh, Debussy and Bobby. And all four of them are biological males who left behind a stere stereotypical male life to live life on the fringes. And for uh, Cornelius and Bobby, both of them left a, a, a life of riches. Bobby could have entered the private sector, been professor. Sutri could have worked with his father. But this is where we start to get meta with McCarthy because one of the rules of writing, one of the good things that you should always remember is that there always has to be a dyad out there for your character, whether that be a love interest or a dyadic type of villain, whatever that is. So McCarthy has that. First of all, with these metaphors, excuse me, with the initial twin action with the anti-Sutri and Alicia for Bobby. And both of those are so veiled and complex that it's already enough. But McCarthy doubles down, and this is why he is a legendary writer. Our unconscious, pro our unconscious processes all of this later on, and we may not know that it's going on, and it works for us. And so we have kind of the physical twin, even though Sutri really isn't that physical, but he did have a physical twin. Then we have more the metaphorical twin that's functioning as a mover of energy, which we'll kind of talk about in a second, for these two characters. And now we're going to transition in, into point number two because this is important because you're like, well, how do we know this? Well, because both characters serve at the same serve the same function in the passenger and Sutri. Both first appear at the start of their respective novels and aren't there to necessarily magnify the protagonist because sometimes that's what you see these fringe characters, no matter who they are, doing in a narrative to kind of magnify the character's personality, maybe even like a Shrek and Donkey type scenario. But instead the trans characters in, in these novels literally serve as a vessel of transportation to the next level, to a different realm of reality. And then at the end of the novel, provide that same closure once the, the journey is done. And, that, and I will explain this now because 
We're, we're talking about contrast. We just talked about the dyadic double contrast that Cormac McCarthy did. And contrast is obviously one of the most important parts of storytelling and nuanced and legendary authors just have layers and layers of it. So we have somebody who kind of opens the door, for instance, uh, Debussy Fields in The Passenger. After uh, Bobby goes and talks to Debussy, everything from that point on starts to ramp up. Bobby's friend dies. He eventually, the feds start getting on him and he has to flee. And Debussy in The Passenger rips Bobby out of this kind of state that he's in. And obviously they've had many interactions before, but in this specific scenario, Bobby maybe feels the pressure's on because he knows all this is really weird. And when we're introduced to him, we don't get very much depth from him. He really isn't doing anything yet. But after their meeting and a couple other subsequent events, he goes to Tennessee. He goes out west. He goes through the whole journey that we know now. And then when we look at Sutri, Trippin' Through the Dew appears about a fourth of the way through the novel around page 110 out of 400 and something. And this somewhat serves as a pivot point from Sutri just kind of in engaging in the cyclical actions of partying and doing everything with Harrogate and eventually opens him up to the mountain scene, to the to the pearl hunting scenes, to him getting eventually with the prostitute or the lady of the streets. And this kind of moves into a broader point, how people who are different see a different version of reality. They are seeing things differently. And we have these characters who are striving to see a different version of reality. And so when we have more of extreme examples of people who have decided to jump across the gap of gender and whatnot, especially in the 1950s, early 1980s, down in the South, that they've opened the way. They've, you know, you know, opened a trail for others to walk down on their own respective journey that has nothing to do with gender. An example of this could be like stand-up comedy. Stand-up comedy, if it is done right and, the, and, and comics are doing a good job, are attacking everybody, telling jokes and making it okay for TV and writers and other people to do it. But if the stand-up comics in, in little clubs in cities are censoring themselves and whatnot, then that's going to be kind of downstream. And that's the same thing with Sutri. If he was living in a town that didn't have these fringe characters to show him a different way, then he probably wouldn't be taking the path that he would be taking. And what really ties this all together and ties up the system of transportation is that the two people that t- tie up the this whole saga they go on of transformation – for Bobby and for Sutri are once again Debussy Fields and Trippin' Through the Dew. So in The Passenger, uh, Bobby Western, at the end of the novel, calls upon Debussy to read Alicia's letter and part of her diary from 1972, like basically around the time that she was killing herself, some of the last things she ever wrote to Bobby. And Bobby asks her to see if there's any mention of Alicia's violin in the letter. And we actually now know what was in that letter. I made a video on this already, but it was pretty simple. It basically surmounted to, hey, I still love you, Bobby. Like, I'm sorry that this is happening. Like, you're the only person I've ever loved. Yada, yada, yada. It was like just basically a, a huge love letter. And the intrigue and stuff that she doesn't, that we never figure out is honestly really good. But once again, McCarthy follows a very similar trajectory because this is 30 ish pages, if I remember correctly, before the end of the novel. And this kind of sends uh, Bobby off to Europe and kind of closes the show in terms of the whole Alicia saga. And then when we return to Sutri, obviously the same exact thing happens. Sutri is leaving town to go become. This new man to escape this twin. And that's the same thing, excuse me, that happened before. Bobby is finally released from Alicia. And he's also releasing himself from the dyad of his trauma. Because all four characters are survivors and you could say victims or reactionary to their trauma. And at the end of both novels, the characters now move on as themselves. And the third way that McCarthy uses these characters to enhance the narrative story is by showing some fallibility in their thinking. For instance, when we see Cornelius Sutri referring to Trippin in the Dew, sometimes he calls Trippin John, which was uh, Trippin's original name. And then also he calls uh, Trippin he or she multiple times. There is actually no set uh, pronoun that he uses because I just think it's probably related to his mood and maybe sometimes he wants to try or he doesn't care. But this is probably very typical for someone like Sutri. And probably most people, obviously, especially back then, were not calling Trippin by 
the he, her she pronoun or whatever and probably just kept with the he it and and such he actually says in regards to another transgender character we don't really hear about that but that is a female transgender character such he says quote you or her him it so it's like he kind of has this confusion here about the whole thing but he's open to it and another big thing with uh tripping through the dew is that such seems to be such an enigma that these characters like him because tripping through the dew obviously has a fascination for him but uh gay men in town eyes turn from soulful to hot whenever they see such and Trippin makes some comments, you know, just kind of hitting on Sutri every once in a while. And another interesting thing, and we'll kind of now start kind of going into the weeds a little bit about McCarthy's usage and ideas, because he maintains the terminology of the time by calling her an androgyny or a, a, and uh, an invert, Trippin, John, whatever name we are using. And so I think that it's interesting that McCarthy introduces these characters, because I made another video on transgenderism in, in Cormac and Cormac McCarthy. And, you know, I got a whole bunch of comments on both sides of the aisle. But one of the things that people were talking about was like, I can't believe that Cormac McCarthy, of all people, is shoving this down our throats. And if you are involved, if you are living in an urban area, uh, like a downtown urban area in New Orleans or Knoxville, and you are out in the party scene, you are going out and you are drinking, you are going to meet transgender people even in the 1950s and the 1980s. And they are also obviously going to stand out. They're going to be people unlike the rest of the crowd. And so McCarthy in Sutri is obviously, there's a bunch of people that Sutri is meeting all the time, but McCarthy is cataloging one of them. And maybe he knew someone like this because he was involved at the exact same time period or yeah, actually the exact same time period Sutri was taking place in downtown Knoxville. So I'm sure that he knew transgender individuals or people who were kind of veering that direction. And when he met them, he kind of saw through the facade because McCarthy is also not a Christian. McCarthy, as much as people like to talk about the symbolism, he rejected Christianity in high school, researched in, into Gnosticism and stuff that fuels kind of the biblical sim symbolism within his novels. But I don't think he is that judgmental of a person and was is the type of guy to be like, I can't talk to you. I'm, I'm just going to wholeheartedly reject you. He probably talked to Anybody who was kind to him or anybody at all, you every, McCarthy was very social, especially during that time, from all available accounts. And McCarthy reinforces this idea when at the end of uh, chapter number two with Bobby and Debbie, when he says, quote, quote, he watched her until she was lost among the Taurus, men and women alike turning to look after her. He thought that God's goodness appeared in strange, strange places. Don't close your eyes. And I think that sums up McCarthy's whole approach toward this issue is that he's open-minded about it. And you can argue all you want in the comment section about what you guys think. But McCarthy, from what I can tell, on an individual, non-political basis, is open-minded to meeting everybody. So what are your guys' thoughts about this analysis? Our three steps, once again, are he is using transgender characters as a double twin, a double contrast, a twin within a twin. Uh, more in the physical plane because the twin Alicia and and the anti Sutri twin is not present, so there has to be a physical stand in. And then second Sutri, excuse me, Cormac is using them as a start and end of the journey, showing them moving the energy. And then third, as a way to show these characters attitudes toward diverse and complex situations, which then helps us kind of understand them more and see that they're not necessarily like everyone else. What would Harrogate or Euler and the Passenger think of Debbie or Trippin' Through the Dew? They wouldn't ha have such a nuanced reaction and also be open to being changed by them. And that's kind of the core of the French characters in McCarthy's novels is that they are prompting the other characters to change. Because once again, a lot of the, the protagonists are are men who have no little to no interiority. And so what the only way we can see them change is through outside action influence, influencing them. So thank you guys for being here. If you want more Cormac McCarthy content, check out my Cormac McCarthy podcast playlist down below. It has over 150 videos on Cormac, and I will see you guys in the next video.